Hi, welcome to the Sassy Spoon Kitchen. Today we're doing grilled pizzas. This is gonna be a pretty quick video. Um, I've already made the pizza dough and this is James Beard's quick pizza dough. So I will link the recipe for you, but the dough's already been made. I had it in my oven on the proof setting and it's ready to go. So I'm gonna take a little bread flour and spread it on my surface here. We're gonna degas this dough, which as you can see is full of gas. <laughs> and this is enough to make two fairly large pizzas or four personal pizzas. Um, I'm gonna make two medium sized pizzas. So um, we'll see what we end up with here after we degas it. When you do them on the, on the grill, it's a little different than doing them on a pizza stone or, or doing them in the oven or in a pan. We're gonna do it directly on the grill. So what we're gonna do is get the grill good and hot, and then we're going to take the dough and put it on the grill. We're gonna spray oil on both sides of the dough. And I think I'm just going to do two pieces here. We're going to spray oil directly on the grill. I mean, directly on the dough on both sides. We'll put one side down and let it cook on the grill. Then when it's cooked, we'll flip it over and immediately put the toppings on it. And uh, cover the grill. And... So that side's already cooked. So the bottom side's cooking while the top side is already cooked and the um, ingredients are basically melting or cooking on it. So you, put, you don't put a lot of heavy ingredients on it. You don't put anything that's really uncooked other than some vegetables or herbs and cheese. So you don't put anything heavy on it. And that's basically it. It's really easy to make. They're fast to cook. And they come out pretty good. They're, um, the, the crust is a little toastier than some, but um, I really like them. And they're, they're really no mess. And it's really nice for the summer because you don't heat up the kitchen with the oven. And they're really kind of fun. Um, it's really fun for kids because um, they can make their own pizzas. And you can do them any size you want. And because it's instant gratification, kids like that. All right, so I have these two. I'm going to let them set for just a few minutes. So we'll come back. I'm going to let the dough rest now that we've degassed it and everything. And we'll come back in just about five minutes and we'll roll them out and put them on pizza peels. Now I have one already rolled out on the peel over here and I'm going to roll the second one out now. Um, basically, you just want to kind of keep flipping it and rolling it it and rolling it uh, just gently you don't want to poke any holes in it um, you don't want a really really thin crust here because you want to make sure that it does hold up but you also don't want too thick of a crust you want it to cook all the way through so about um, a little thicker than a quarter of an inch is about right, and you'll see when I'm finished here, or you can see on the one that's already finished, between a half and a quarter of an inch. And it'll already start, because this is a, uh, done with instant rice yeast, um, it does start gassing really fast after you roll it. So we'll get this right out there as fast as we can. So you just keep rolling and rolling. You can pat it with your hands a bit and pull it a bit like this. But no tossing, I don't think. <laughs> Unless you're a really good tosser. It's not a very, very elastic crust. But, um, it is a quick crust. So um, you don't, this usually the crust that I make, um, 
I do ferment them in the refrigerator overnight, and they're very elastic. But this one, you can make it about an hour and a half to two hours before you're ready to make pizza. That's the advantage of it. It's a really quick crust. And um, this is made, this crust is meant to be baked in the oven, but you can do whatever you want with it. So you see it's starting to pull out. And I do have two peels, but if you don't, or if you don't even have a peel at all, you can run, put it on a um, cookie sheet and run out to the grill with it. You don't have to have a peel for this. It does help if you do, and I happen to have two. I even have four, I have two big ones because I used to have a wood burning pizza oven. And I had some with real long handles. These are very short handled ones for indoor. And I also have a metal handled short one, which you'll see later on in the film, that I use to take it off the fire with. And I have big ones like that too, that I used in my wood burning oven. Okay, this one's just about done. Now obviously, because my peels are a certain size, even though my grill is big, I don't wanna make my pizza too big so that it'll fit on my peel. So this peel has two sides. This one you can even use to take the pizza off the pan, off the bottom of the oven or whatever. But I'm just gonna go ahead and use it this side. So you can see I have a little more room here, so I'm just gonna squeeze it out a little bit. Now, if you were using your pizza peel to put your pizza in the oven, then you need to put some cornmeal underneath it so that it'll slide off. But we're not doing that, so we're just gonna lift it off. Okay, so now I'm gonna move the camera outside of the grill and we'll take it out there. As you can see, it's almost 600 degrees in this grill, which is really pretty hot. And um, I'm just gonna scrape off the grill while it's getting hot like this. Spray it with olive oil spray on the side that's going to go down on it. And then we'll put a little spray on this not to get the spray down into the grill itself. Okay, we're gonna close that for just a minute. And I'm gonna go spray the other piece of dough and get it prepped and then I'll come back in a minute when we're ready to flip. Being really quickly and the temperature went down. I had the lid down. So the temperature went down to 400 just within a couple of seconds or a couple, maybe one minute. So as you can see, it's bubbling up. That means it's cooking. Remember those pancakes? <laughs> they doubled. So I just lift this up and show you. It's cooking very well on the bottom. It's almost ready to flip. So we have it sprayed, and um, I'm gonna give it a one more little spray on top. Yeah. And now I'm gonna flip it. And you have to be really quick now with the ingredients when you flip it. Okay, so we have the sauce, and I'm gonna show you the sauce in a minute, but at first I'm just gonna get everything loaded on it. You don't wanna put too much sauce on, just a little. my 
husband pizza, husband's pizza, so he wants just plain mozzarella on it. And it should melt pretty quickly too. I'm going to go ahead and turn this down a little bit. So the bottom doesn't burn. in a couple spots. And then some onion and mushrooms. Sacrificial onion slice there. Portobello's. There we go. And maybe one more over here. And then we'll and close the lid. Okay, now while that's good, <coughs> excuse me, cooking. You see it went all the way down to 300. This cracked me up. I saw it in the grocery store when I was traveling somewhere. I don't even remember where now. I got a couple jars of it or cans of it. It's Don Pepino Jersey Fresh Pizza Sauce. <laughs> and it actually tastes pretty good. I used it once before already. So anyway, I thought that was kind of fun. So as I did to tell you, I turned it down to medium. But still, the heat went down when I just had the lid open for a minute and put this, put this stuff on there. So, this is what I'm going to use to take this off. And I actually bought this at an Amish baking supply company in Indiana. And they used it for stirring big pots of things. <laughs> so, but it's perfect for taking things off grill or pizzas off. It's not quite melted yet. Yep, let me just check the bottom. Make sure it's not burning. Nope, it's fine. It's fine. So if your bottom gets looks like it's getting too dark and the top's not completely melted, you can take it off and then put it under the broiler in the kitchen if that's the case. Sometimes you can do that. Anyway, this was just like the coolest thing I ever got. And it was obviously a very handmade tool. Because I use it all the time. Let's take it off. The heat's going up. It's almost 400 now. The cheese is melting. The mushrooms still look a little raw. So I think maybe I will take it out and um, put it on a pan and put it under the broiler. So I'll bring the other one out. So the cheese melted, but those mushrooms they still look a little undercooked. That's perfectly fine. And let's just stick it into the broiler. Okay, so we have our other one ready to go. Turn the heat back up. Don't worry if um, they aren't exactly round. That we've got a really weak spot right there. Okay, I'm gonna close it up, and I'll come back in a minute. I don't know if you can see it or not, but we have some visitors in our backyard. A couple of my dear friends are out there. Hi, babies. They're not too interested. They're not big pizza fans. <laughs> 
Okay, this one's ready. So we are all ready. The other one's under the broiler. I'm gonna go turn it off and then I'll come back and show you both of them finished. Here they are, ready to eat. All I have to do is cut them. I'm gonna let them cool just a little bit. There's still some steam coming off of the tomato one. So anyway, in hindsight, I wish I had time to make my regular pizza dough because this came out a little thicker than I really like. And I think it's because I used the instant uh, yeast and I didn't use my long ferment. But in a pinch, in an hour and a half, I had pizza dough. So I didn't have to heat up my kitchen and I think these are gonna be delicious. So this is your grilled pizza. There you go. Please subscribe. Thanks. Bye.